Okay, this is a continuation of section 1.6 for Mac 1105. We had gotten to the examples. We were solving um, radical equations, but they were coming in the form of an exponent that was a fraction that's called a rational exponent, which really can be written as radicals and therefore they classify as radical equations. Um, I was alerting you to the fact that sometimes there's one solution, sometimes there's two. You can tell by the numerator, like the numerator here is 5, numerator here is, here, is 2 in the example below. And you can tell by that numerator whether or not there's going to be one or two solutions. As it states here in this summary box, if the top of the fraction is even, then there is going to be both a positive and a negative root, just like when you're solving square root problems. Those are considered even roots, and therefore you have both the positive and negative solution. If the top of that rational exponent is odd, then there's only going to be one root. So in this first problem, you see that the top of that fractional exponent is odd. That means that there's only going to be one root or one solution, not the plus or minus. Okay, so in this problem, um, you're going to want to get rid of the fractional exponent so that you can solve the um, problem in a more simplistic manner, and therefore you're going to have to isolate the term containing that rational exponent. That would require pulling this negative 48 to the other side, at which point it becomes positive 48, as well as getting rid of the coefficient by dividing it off of there. You then end up with x to the 5 halves as the exponent equal to 16. And if you want to get rid of the rational exponent, the fractional exponent means the same thing, you're going to raise um, this power to a power that's equal to the reciprocal. You want to use the reciprocal here and raise it to that power. Because when you raise one power to another power according to the power rules, you're multiplying the powers. So that this power, instead of it being an, a complicated fraction like this, it becomes, through the power rule, 10 over 10. So now the power is just 1. But remember, whatever you do to one side, you have to do to the other side. So you're going to have to raise the other side to a power of 2 fifths as well. So again, as stated, power to a power rule, you're just multiplying. So top times top over bottom times bottom makes this x to the first degree, or just x. Whereas on this side, you're going to have um, 16 to the 2 fifths, and you're going to try and simplify that the best you can. Okay, so when you go to write this in radical form so that you can attempt to um, simplify it, this is how you write it in radical form. The bottom is the index of the radical. So this is going to be a fifth root. And the square is the power that stays on this base, which actually becomes the radicand. So now, if you want to try and take a fifth root of something, I mean, if you take the fifth root of this entire number, 16 times 16, you're going to get a decimal. And that's because you, it, you can only really take a partial square root. Anytime you find five repeating factors, you can bring one of them out as the fifth root. So let's see, if we had 16 times 16, that would be like this. I don't see five repeating num five repeating factors, but you can break these 16s down into 4 times 4 for this one, 4 times 4 for this one. I still don't see five repeating factors, but they can be broken down further. You can break the first 4 down as 2 times 2, the second 4 down as another 2 times 2, and then you can still break these 4s down. The first one is 2 times 2, and the second one as 2 times 2. If you do break those down, you are going to have um, at least one group of five repeating factors, which is, which is what it means to take a fifth root. You have to find something that repeats five times. One, two, three, five. There's a group right there of five repeating factors. So you can, to represent this group and that it repeated enough times, you can take out a fifth root for that group. The thing that repeated was the number two. All those twos are gone. 
And the only thing that remains inside the fifth root are these three remaining twos. They didn't repeat again enough times to take out another two. So it's just two times two times two, eight. And that would be your solution. Okay, moving to this next problem where the top is an even, the numerator is even, therefore you're gonna have both a positive and a negative root. So to get rid of this fractional power, there's no multiplier, there's nothing being added or subtracted, so you can just go right into getting rid of the rational exponent. It's already isolated. So I'm gonna take that and give myself some more room here. It presently has a power of two fifths, and I'm gonna get rid of that fractional power by raising this, which is just gonna mean I'm gonna multiply by a reciprocal power which would be five over two. So you're raising this power to yet another power, but when you raise a power to a power, you're really multiplying them. So I guess I should write it like this first, just so we don't get confused here. You're taking something that has a power and raising it to the reciprocal power. But the power to a power rule says that you need to multiply. So that would give you 10 over 10 again, which is just one. So this x minus five ends up having a power of one, which is just x minus five. On the other side, you're gonna have to do the same thing you did as what you did on the left side. You're gonna have to raise to a power of five halves. Anything that has a fractional power or what we call a rational power can be written as a radical, which is why these classify as radical equations. So what you can do now is try to write it in radical form and simplify it as much as it can be simplified. Again, the bottom is the index. It is the type of radical, type of root that you are taking. So this is a square root. What occurs underneath it is nine to the fifth. So this is a typical square root, which only for square roots, we don't write the index. I mean, you can if you want to. Um, and what I would do in this case is you have repeating nines here. So the easiest way to go about this rather than expanding it that many times like I did, and only because there actually is um, a perfect root for this number that you see underneath here. You could ignore the five for right now. Just take the square root of the nine, which is three, and then put that power back on. You can also put it in the calculator just like this. And if you get a decimal, that means that there isn't a perfect square. And then you have to adopt this method where you expand things and break things down, writing them as factors based on their powers. And if there's enough of them, according to the type of root that you're taking, you take one out. Sometimes you can take a number out more than once. But here, if you were to put this in your calculator, and by the way, if you do put it in the calculator with a fractional power, you have to wrap a parenthesis around that power or else it won't come out right. But if you see you're getting a decimal, you have to go back to this and try and see, well, hey, can I take out just part of it? This one, you're going to see whether you put it in the calculator or whether you do it like this, you're going to get just a perfect integer. So again, for this one, you could just go square root of just this um, base right here, what's the part of the radigan, which is three, and then toss that power back on there. And you can get your calculator to help you with that. So you can go three to the fifth, three raised up to a power of five is 243. And you have x minus 5 on the other side. And then to completely solve for x, you would have to add 5 to both sides. Moving the negative 5 to the other side, it's the same thing. 243 plus 5 is 248. And you can even check these. If you go to check this, just because this one's a little bit easier to check, I'll check this one. Um, you could take your answer. Let's see if it works out. We think it's 248. Again, these radical problems are the ones that cause the extraneous roots to sometimes happen. 
And also what I have not put on here is that there is both a positive and a negative root. I didn't insert that yet, and I should have been doing that all the way down, positive or negative root. Usually that you, you realize that here right now when you're taking an even root that you should be reporting um, both roots. So, so far I did positive 243 plus 5, and I got 248, but there's also the negative 243. It's either plus or minus 243. That's what the 3 to the 5th was. So I dealt with the positive 243, brought the 5 over here, which became positive 5, and combined it with the positive 243 to get me this answer. But that positive 5 could also be combined with the negative 243, which would be negative 243 plus 5, and you would have negative 238. So supposedly these are the two answers. I was going to check them. So here's my answer of 248. I'm plugging it into the original equation where you're subtracting 5 and raising it to a power of 2 fifths and seeing if it's equal to 9, if it really is an answer. So 248 um, minus 5 is 243 raised to a power 2 fifths. I'll show you how to put that in the calculator. That fractional power has to be inserted in a parenthesis, whereas the base, since it's a single number, really doesn't have to have a parenthesis around it. So we're doing 2, 243 raised up to a power of 2 fifths. 2 divided by 5, and let's see if that's 9. It is 9, so that works out. That answer of 248, check. Now we're going to use the other answer and see if that works out. So let's see, that would be negative 238 minus 5 raised to a power of 2 fifths, and we'd be looking to see whether or not that is equal to 9. Okay, so let's see if we had 238 minus 5, negative 238 minus 5, both of those numbers are negative, we'd have negative 243. So we'd have negative 243 raised to a power of 2 fifths, is that equal to 9? Now, since this base has a number as well as a negative, that has to be in parentheses, and of course this fractional power has to be in parentheses. So let's do that. We're going to go the base, negative 243, close it up, raise it up to a power of 2 fifths. So parentheses, put that 2 fifths in there, and we also get a 9. So both of these answers have been found, and they've been checked. Okay, so we have negative 238 as one of the answers, and we also have 243 as one of the answers. Okay, moving on to the next page, which was absolute value problems. So in these absolute value problems, what you are looking for is um, you're looking for two or more solutions. Well, when you're doing an absolute value equation, you're going to have two solutions. Some types of absolute value problems have more answers than that, but that's in the less than and greater than case. So here, um, what you're looking for, uh, and they try to explain the setup up here. I'm going to go into this problem and explain it as we go along. Um, the first thing you're going to do is isolate the absolute value bars. And then we're going to talk about how to get rid of them, how to turn this into an equation that doesn't have absolute value bars in it. Okay, if you're going to isolate these at the expression in the absolute value bars, you have to move the negative 7. So this is 13 plus 7 with the multiplier of 2 still out in front of the absolute value of x plus 5. And so then you're going to have a 20 here and 2 times the absolute value of x plus 5. Then you're going to divide off the 2, and you're going to end up with x plus 5 is equal to 10. We'll discuss in the next video. 
how you go from this into the two equations that don't have absolute value 